This is a continuation from the last lesson I did. Um, we started looking at these blues um, dominant seven arpeggios in the key of A. I'm not going to go right back into that, you can look at the last video. I'm just going to do a couple more concepts and ways to expand um, getting out of this concept that we all seem to get in of just going up and down an arpeggio or up and down a scale. We want to really start seeing the guitar this way and breaking out of each arpeggio shape into the next and sort of incorporate it into sort of a blues sort of lead sense rather than just you know you need to learn that but you also then need to start forcing yourself to break out of it into the other shapes and the, the, the five different arpeggio shapes are a great way to start doing it so what we did in the in, in it was yesterday so it's the last lesson we looked at uh, our E shape our G shape, which is also our A shape. And we will come in from this G shape into the A shape and then up it like this. Now we'll go to the four chord. So what I'm going to do, we're going to start looking at again using this G shape and A shape, but moving them around and you know moving up into these, some of these other shapes. Today we'll also touch on the C shape for A, which is you know, your C7, it's A7, C shape off the 10th fret, uh, 12th fret, A string root, there's your A dominant 7. Messing up a lot. So, Let's get back to this G shape where we started. What we can do, if you've been learned, if you've learned this shape and the E shape next to each other, let's start blending these together. So we start on our root, major third, fifth. And then we come over to the flat seven here, which shares the same flat seven as in the E shape. So what we can do when we get to that flat seven out of the G shape, we can slide into the root of the E shape. And then down that root, third, fifth, down that triad, and flat seven, and then slide that up into the next shape, which is the D shape. So right there, you've traveled from this, basically this A, into the G, into the E, into the D. Just using the arpeggios, just try and visualize, if you learn them, you can visualize them arpeggios. Um, sliding into, to finish it, the 10th fret on the B, which is a root. So we've got root, third, fifth, flat seven, and then the order continues. Root, third, fifth, flat seven, root. There I come up my C shape, which is what we'll take a look at now. So the C shape, if you're starting on the root, we've got 12th fret, A string, which is our A, so that's our root note, third finger, and then the same as the top of this G shape, we've got the major third. And then the fifth is also in the same place same distance apart and then the flat seven also it's the same same pattern as this G shape but we're coming off this A root here so it's easy to remember nothing new there so here we started on the low E here we're starting it on the A 
12th fret. There's our flat seven. So then we need a we need we need a root, and our root is 10th fret on the B string, straight from our BB box. And then we need a root, uh, a third, so the third is 9th fret, high E. So there you're outlining this D shape. So the, 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 so you've got the C shape there, the dominant 7. So if you look at your major chords, you've got this C bar chord and at the bottom, you've got your D shape. So you're coming down through them two chords. And then this pattern here, so if you get your middle finger on this 10th fret root on the B, you've got this, which is the same as the top of this. So there's not much new to, to do with this C shape. The, 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 the beginning of it is the same as the G. Then we do that little pattern that we already know from the A. Off, and the same fingers, middle finger. So we're just gonna find that root on the B string. And that's that shape finished. So we've got. But it's a good, a good exercise to bring this, what we've been doing here. And now bring that into this C shape and extend our little study. And a good way to do that when we're on this root, so we're, we've got the third finger now on this root where we're doing this shape. So we're going to grab our first finger, but well, we're not going to grab the first finger. What we're going to do, we're going to take our first finger and we're going to slide in to that major third on the high E. So we're sliding from the eighth to the ninth. And that puts us in position for this triad, uh, for this um, arpeggio. It's major third, grab the root. Straight up the arpeggio. And the, the, the move I did there, so we've slid into that first finger. Then root with our middle. The same as we do for the actual arpeggio. Then we're going to grab the flat seven with our pinky and pull off to the fifth. So we've got pinky on the 12th fret G string and then the fifth is the ninth fret G string. So we'll do that pull off. Then slide into the major third again with our middle finger from the 10th to the 11th. And then we can just grab that A root on the 12th fret A string. And that puts us right in position for that chord. If you've used the correct fingers, you should land perfectly on that chord. So all together now we've got. flat seven to the fifth I'm grabbing the four so that's not in the arpeggio but that's a scale tone so it's good to start getting used to playing some of these so we've got and the four is D string 12th fret pinky and the middle finger sliding right next to it major third back to the root that always sounds good that four to the major third the root always sounds good and resolved. And you can do it, you can do it root 
to root as an exercise root to root 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 to the root and another good thing to do on top of this stuff is start seeing the major pentatonic underneath these scales. So right under this C shape, we've got our BB box. It's right in that chord. The G shape, this is all in A, remember, the G shape. You grab that root, second fret G string, and you're writing the major pentatonic here. You can see, so you remember your A minor pentatonic, fifth fret. In the third back, you've got your A major pentatonic. That's right where that this popular area is right in this A shape to the G shape. And again, that is the same as your BB box. Right where that chord is. Right where that chord is. Whatever you do on any chord, you can do the same stuff just in a different way wherever the other chord exists. That's the cool thing about this. So when you're, when you're improvising to a jam track and playing lead guitar, wherever you find yourself on the neck, as long as you know where the chord is in the arpeggio, you know, you can play some lines and hit the right notes. Right into my major third of the E shape. Another good tip is uh, we all learn the major pentatonic, that, that shape of the minor, a minor third back. But it's also good to learn the major pentatonic this way because it flows straight through all these arpeggios. It's good to learn it as a run. mixing a bit of the minor pentatonic. Wherever you've got the major pentatonic in the arpeggio, there's always a minor shape. So that run, root, first finger, low E on the A, Sliding into the major third. Remember, if you know your arpeggios, you're going to know all these notes. Then we're going to play across the fifth to the root. So that's the A and the D strings on the seventh fret. And then we're going to slide up ninth fret D, right into the major third of this shape. Then we're going to grab the fifth, which is an E, G string ninth fret. And there's our root, that's the major pentatonic. Straight to a four chord. So if you know where, there's my E shape for D. Same thing here for D. Now you blend that in with blend that 
playing with your A. Then we're on our five chord. Back to our one. So learning the arpeggios, the major pentatonic and the minor pentatonic is really gonna help you out and just blow the doors off all this stuff for you where you're not just having to think about just scales up and down. You can look at the guitar this way and know exactly where you are, wherever you find yourself. You know, you've got you know, these chords and arpeggios right under your fingers.